Oh my zish. What's up everybody? It's Travis here from Travis.media. Yeah, I know it's not zish. I don't think anybody calls it that, even though you know you want to. People call it ZSH or ZSH or Z Shell. So whatever you call it, it's just an alternative to something like Bash. If you do a lot of work in the terminal or are a developer, then you know what I'm talking about. And actually it comes default on MacBooks now. You don't get Bash anymore, you get ZSH or Z Shell. And if you've used ZSH, which you should have, then surely you've heard of Oh My ZSH, which is an open sourced framework for Z Shell. And what it does is it gives you lots of plugins and themes, and it gives you this whole ecosystem that just makes the terminal really, really powerful. So today I wanna share my top 10 Oh My Zish plugins that make my life as a developer and soon to be your life as a developer much more productive. Now disclaimer, this video assumes that you have basic knowledge of working in the terminal or the command line, whatever you wanna call it. If you know stuff like LS, PWD, CD, basic commands like that, how to get around the file system, touch, MKDIR or make dir. <laughs> I don't know if anybody calls it that other than me, but that's what I call it, make dir. CHMOD, chmod or chmod. If you have no clue what any of that is, then you may wanna go find a command line basics video to watch first. But if you have the command line basics down, then I think this is the perfect video for you because these plugins will help you work faster. So let's get started. All right, so the first plugin we're gonna look at is ZSH Auto Suggestions. And it does exactly as it says. It auto suggests as you typed based on things that you've typed in the past. So let me open up my terminal. So let's say I start typing the word Python. It's gonna suggest the auto completion of main.py, which I've used a lot. So if I want that, I can hit the right arrow and run it. Now let's try something else. How about AWS? Here's an AWS Lambda CLI function that I've run in the past, and it's showing me that in this faded gray text. So if that's what I want again, just hit the right arrow key and run it. Now this is a tool I cannot work without anymore because when I run these kind of long typed out functions and I need them again in the future, I don't wanna to have to type them out again. I want it to auto-suggest that command for me. Now, another neat thing I can do with auto-suggestions is that I can start typing something like go, like I'm gonna run a go command, and it's gonna suggest Google React Hooks, which we'll get to that in a minute. But I can hit tab, and it'll actually show me a bunch of suggestions from that simple word, go, that I've used in the past. So uh, if I want Google Drive, uh, if I wanna to go to the Go Projects directory, if I wanna run Godoc, which I've run in the past too, Go format, Goodreads, things like that. So it is like an autocomplete as you type. So it remembers your long commands of the past. That's really helpful. But it also suggests things like commands and drives in words that you typed in in the past. Now to use this, this is one of the only plugins in the list here that you have to install something. So if you go, if you just type in ZSH auto suggestions, you'll come to this page and it'll tell you to ins installation, just click on install.md and it'll give you the command to install it. So I'm on Mac OS, so I can install it with Homebrew. So if I don't know the command for that, I can type in Homebrew, install uh, uh, ZSH auto suggestions. And hey, I'll find it right here, brew install ZSH auto suggestions. So you have to install that first, and then you can add it to your plugins. So if I open up, let me open up my terminal again. If I do VI, See that autocomplete? ZSH RC, which is like the bash RC equivalent of ZSH. If I open that up and I come down, let me page down a little bit, and I go to plugins here, I just, once I install it, I just add it to this list. So this is a uh, spaced list, not a comma separated, but you put in the plugin, space, plugin, space. So um, let me see, yeah, right down here, right here it says ZSH auto suggestions. So that's added to my plugins, that's why it's working. And by the way, as we go through these plugins, that's all you need to do for the rest of them. You just add it in. Like if I want sudo, which we're gonna talk about, just add it in. If I want web search, add it in, history, add it in. You just add it into the ZHRC file. Easy enough, let me escape out of this. All right, so that's auto suggestions. The next plugin on the list is sudo. Now this one is really, really helpful. So if I'm typing something like, let's say I wanna reboot my machine and I go reboot, Operations not permitted because I have to run this sudo. So I need to write sudo reboot and then I can reboot my machine. Well, what if it's a longer command like sudo systemctl restart some service? 
and I forget to put sudo and it's like, you must use sudo. So you either have to hit the up key to put in your last command and then go back to the beginning and type in sudo or something like that. Uh, it's just kind of time consuming. It's not a big deal, but it is time consuming. What the sudo plugin does is you actually, like let me put reboot, you actually just hit escape twice and it adds the same command you just typed with sudo at the beginning. So let's say it was something like systemctl uh, restart iterm. You know, it's not going to work because I don't have systemctl. But let's say I use that and it's like, you must use sudo. So instead of having to you know, go up and then go back to the beginning here and type in sudo, it's just so easy to just say escape, escape. Boom, there it is. So that's sudo. Just add sudo at the beginning. And to install that, like I said, just add sudo to your list of plugins. All right, so let's move on to plugin number three. Plugin number three is web search. And it does exactly as it says. Let's say I'm, you know, I'm sitting here and I'm like LS and I can't remember how to show, well, there's my auto suggestions of course, but let's say I can't remember how to show hidden files. And I'm like, oh, I don't know what that is. Uh, let's Google it. So I can actually Google this from the command line. So I can say Google LS hidden files. And it's gonna open a web page with just what I typed. And there it is, listing hidden files and folders with the A and the L. So now I know, hey, I'm back to my terminal, LS, LA, there we go. And that's what web search does. When you're in your terminal and you're working, you need to look up a command, you need to look up your email, anything, just Google um, time in London. And it just saves time being able to do that from your terminal. So that's plugin number three, add it to your plugins. Plugin number four is CopyDir. And this simply copies the path of your current folder to the system clipboard. Now the use case for this is, let's say I'm like uh, CD desktop, CD Python, oh, what do I have in here? Um, CD API. Let's say I'm all the way in this API request folder. And I'm like, ah, I forgot to change something in my configuration, which is way back in desktop. Now I could open another tab and do it like that. But a lot of times you just have to go back. Like you have to CD dot dot, CD dot dot, back to desktop. And let's say it wasn't just three folders, it's like 10 folders and you're really deep and you don't want to have to go all the way back and then, you know, maybe, you know, CD all the way back into this tree again. What CopyDir does is it simply copies the path to where you're at at the moment. So CopyDir, and now I can uh, paste, let's paste what it copied. There it is, users, Travis Rogers, desktop, Python. And that's CopyDir. So that's CopyDir or copy directory. You think you might not need it, but just add it to your plugins. It'll come in handy more than you think. All right, plugin number five is very similar. It's called copy file. And what this does is it will take the contents of a file, like this band name generator. It'll take the contents of a file and copy it to your clipboard. So let's open up code. I can demonstrate this better. So let's say I, you know, I want the contents from this band name generator Python file. I want to paste it into my code editor here. So I can just say copy file band name gen.py return and it's currently in my clipboard. So I can come here, paste it right in. Look at that. All right, so that's copy file. So let's look at plugin number six. So our sixth plugin is called Copy Buffer. This plugin binds the Control O keyboard shortcut and copies the text that's currently typed in the command line. So if I was here and I wanted to CD into A, B, C, D, files, test, um, 2021. Let's say I was about to do this and I was like, oh man, actually I gotta go back and fix something. And I don't wanna have to retype this in. I can just hit Control O and then let's say I cleared it and I did what I need to do. And then later on, I can hit Command V to paste my CD command in again, which is really cool. You can copy any text that's right there in the terminal. So if I had this and it was a really important word, I can Control O, I can clear it, I can go do some stuff, and then I can paste it back in. And that's copy buffer, pretty simple. All right, plugin number seven is Dir History. So this plugin adds keyboard shortcuts for navigating directory history and hierarchy. This one is really cool if you get used to using it. So let's go back to, uh, let's go back here. Let me CD out, CD out. All right, so let's say I CD into desktop and CD into Python. 
and then cd into api requests. Let's say I'm here and I want to go back to the Python folder. I would normally have to hit cd dot dot to go back, but with dir history, you can actually use shortcuts. So alt left goes to the previous directory. It doesn't just type in that directory name, it actually takes you there. So alt left takes you to the previous directory. Um, alt right undoes what you just did, so it moves you back to the right. And then alt up moves you into the parent directory. So here's how it works. If I'm here in API requests, I want to go back to the Python directory. I just hit, I just hit alt left and I'm in the Python. All right, I want to undo that, I hit alt right, I'm back in API requests. Let's say I need to get back to desktop. I just alt left twice and I'm in desktop. Let's say I need to get back in API request. Alt right. Really, really, really helpful and fairly easy to use. Again, alt up is the parent directory, so alt up takes me to Python. It just moves you back to, and uh, alt down moves you to the first child directory by alphabetical order. I don't really use that because it gives you whatever's at the top, which in this case is dot idea. I don't need that. But anyway, that's dir history. Next up is ZSH reload plugin. So you know when you make changes to like bash RC, bash, Profile or ZSHRC, you make changes to these, uh, you have to actually source that. So you have to put in source bash RC to refresh that configuration, or you have to go out of the terminal and come back in to refresh it. So if I, you know, VI into this, let's say I come down here and I change my theme, my ZSH, my ZSH theme is Eastwood. Let's say I change it to something else and then I get out of here. Um, it's not going to work right away. I have to type in source and then I have to type in ZSH. Either that or I have to close my terminal and reopen it. Well, with this in your plugins, all you do is type in SRC. So if I want to refresh it, SRC, enter, refreshed. Again, not a major thing, but a real time saver if you're doing something that involves you having to refresh that configuration. All right, next plugin is the history plugin. So you might already know about the history command. If I type in history, it's gonna tell me the history of my commands in the terminal, um, which it looks like I have 2,600 something here in the history. Well, let's say I wanna grep it. What you do is it says here, you know, history, and you pipe it to grep, and then you, you search for whatever you want. But this plugin gives you shortcuts. So I can actually say, in HS lets you search your command history, HSI lets you do it in a case insensitive way which I'm gonna use here. So let's say I wanna look for my AWS commands, my CLI commands. I simply type HSI, AWS, and it's gonna show me all of my commands that have AWS in it. So it's just the history feature that you're already used to, but gives you some shortcuts for using it. That's all, clear. And the 10th plugin is the JSON tools plugin. There's a couple of things you can do that, that's really neat here, like, like URL encode or URL decode. Or you can check, hey, is, is this valid JSON? But what I use it for mainly is pretty printing. So pp underscore JSON. So let's take something like uh, Chuck Norris quotes API. And uh, yeah, let's take this command here. Let's curl this uh, API call here. So curl, paste this in. Look at this, my autocomplete is showing up that I've done this before. Let's take this ppjson off and just hit return. <clears throat> and you get this JSON back, but it's all jumbled up. It doesn't read very well. So what this plugin does, it allows you to pipe to ppjson and makes it pretty, pretty print. So when I do that, it comes back nice and neat and I can read it better in the terminal. If you're curling an API, you're getting JSON back, you need this because you just can't read this jumbled up stuff. All right, so those are my 10 favorite and most productive plugins. Now let me show you one bonus here, if you have a Mac. There is a plugin called the OSX plugin that has some great things in it that I think you'll like. So if you have a Mac, check this out. So I have this plugin installed. Just add OSX to your plugins list. And you can do stuff like this. Look at this tab, opens a new tab. Um, split tab, V split tab, those are cool. Actually tab is pretty easy with iTerm anyway. It's just Apple T, so that's not really helpful. But look at this, OFD opens the current directory in a finder window. I don't know about you, but I need this all the time. So let's go back to desktop, Python. <clears throat> let's say I'm in this directory, I wanna copy like 20 files over to some other folder or in VS Code or something like that. And I wanna do it from the finder window. I can go, I can type in simply OFD and it's gonna open up my finder. It's gonna open up that path 
in my finder. So here it is, my Python folder. This command is really neat. Now let's say I wanna open up this folder in my terminal. Now I could come back and I could take it and drag it in. That's what I used to do. And it's still pretty easy, just drag it in. Another thing you can do is use this pfd command, which returns the path of the frontmost finder window. So if I want this path, so I can come here and just type in pfd, and it'll show me my path. There's also some others that are related, like uh, return the current finder selection. If I select this file and just type pfs, it's gonna show me that file, the path to that file. Uh, CDF, CDs to the current finder directory. So you might have thought a minute ago, you would think doing something like CD, PFD would work, but it doesn't. To CD, to the finder window, you do CDF. All right, another helpful one is this man preview command. It actually gives you the help man pages in Mac preview, like without going to the internet or anything. So let's say I'm about to use the curl command and I can't remember the flags for a certain curl command I want. I can come here and write in man preview curl and I hit enter and it's going to open up the Mac preview of this entire documentation for curl. So I can come down here and I can say, all right, here's the flags. This is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a append or something, um, CA cert, something like that. Really helpful. You don't have to go and Google it. It's just right here on your computer. Uh, there's a couple more uh, show files, hide files. If you don't know the shift command period, that toggles that. You can use show files and hide files. There's also some other stuff like um, controlling Apple Music or Spotify, uh, removing the DS store file, and uh, restarting Bluetooth, things like that. If you have a Mac, check out this OSX plugin. So those are my top 10 Oh My ZSH plugins, and I recommend you add it to yours and learn how to use them because it will up your productivity. Oh my zish, those plugins are so amazing. Well, I hope this video was helpful to you. If you want a link to all these and a quick rundown of how they work, I'm gonna put a link to my blog post, which has the same content below, and you can read about it there. And if this video was helpful, be sure to click that thumbs up button. And again, thank you for watching. See you later.